Hello, my back to the bottom. My name is Beast, and today we're back with, uh, Hiro Sekai. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the, the fucking one day wait y'all had to endure while, the, like, this girl has been falling for, like, an, like, an entire, like, two days. <laughs> but yeah, we're back with this Kingdom Hearts 2 S. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 intro monologue ass game. In case you don't know, the intro monologue for KH2. Like, uh, KH2, 1, 2, uh, 2, and 3 each have, like, their own monologue. Uh, in KH2, it was a scattered dream that's like a far off memory. A far off memory that's like a scattered dream. I want to put the. Uh, I want to put the. Pieces back together, yours and mine. Hence the joke in the description. Maybe you should try to put the fucking moon back together before you worry about the pieces. On a separate note, I don't know how long I'll be recording today. Because I. It is half past 12 midnight. I actually was. Well, PZ isn't quite putting it the right way. I had to wait for someone to respond before I could finish what I was doing and get about recording. And that took a while, sadly. So now we here we are. Also, let me just. I think I accidentally just proceeded with the thing. Like. Things are suddenly too loud. Uh, there we go. That works. Yeah. Uh, I don't need to make that sound. The girl was plummeting towards the ground. The st second I saw her fall, my instincts kicked in and I bolted in her direction. Come on, please! I gotta reach your time! I have to go! I have to, goddammit! <laughs> to my es by my estimates, I was about ten and a half meters from the lighthouse at my starting point. No, no, no poor person would ever be able to run that distance as quickly as I need to. But luckily, I'm no normal person. I'm Zeus's apprentice. I better be able to pull off some this easy if I want to live up to that title. She'd be able to pull off a feat like this, sparing no effort whatsoever. Just, I just know it. And if she can do it, then so can I, damn it! Come on! Stretch my arms as far as they're physically capable of. Every extra millimeter is crucial. Fucking hell! After the mean deeming that I still that I'll still fail to reach her in time, I attempt a dolphin-like dive out of desperation. <laughs> but alas, even after that, my hands clearly missed the mark. Ow! The girl makes impact right on my back. I miscalculated the momentum momentum needed for my heroic save, which resulted in me overshooting the distance by a foot or so. Desperation breeds failure, it seems. God, I must have looked like such an idiot. Every bone in my body is screaming in pain. Oh, what, uh, what have I done? <laughs> also, uh, someone already told me that the first CG was already censored, quote-unquote, because they zoomed in a bit due to her panties being in plain fucking view, which, that wasn't necessary. That wasn't a necessary thing to do. But they also, they mainly pointed it out because you can actually see her slowly but surely get more and more transparent the further down she goes. She nods, blatantly stifling her laughter. <laughs> As for the girl who fell on top of me, she appears to be out cold. Also, a uh, CG gallery is already unlocked, so I don't need to make saves. Hey. 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 Can you hear me? You're alive? <laughs> Just start slapping her. <laughs> You're alive? Uh, I don't know why. I don't know if there was just something in my shower earlier today, but while I was taking a shower, I like stepped on something, and since then, my fucking. the ball of my foot has been in pain whenever I step on it. And I don't know why. You're alive? I'll give her a few light smacks on the cheek. Oh, hey, he actually did that. <laughs> She's not responding. Hmm. 
Hmm. But it doesn't seem to have any external injuries from what I can see. So they so you know, I Good point. I softly stroked the girl's forehead with my fingertips. Her skin is such a pale porcelain, such a pale porcelain white that you might be able to convince me that she'd never seen the light of the sun. Yuma? Nani o kangaiteru? If she had her head incurring some sort of serious injury, then I'm 100% to blame. Nani o yunda? Can't stop the growing guilt in my chest. If Suzette had been in my shoes, she no doubt would have saved the girl. Can't hold a candle to one. Yuma. I was desperate to catch her, too desperate, and because of that, I didn't account for what else might happen. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm responsible for her injuries. Why not? So but she'd be dead if it wasn't for you. But that's not your fault. I was saved by your help. So that's enough. I really think it made that much of a difference. Still, I ask myself, would a person who had willingly chosen to throw away their life thank someone who saved them? She had cast herself from that rail to what was certain death awaiting below. I had witnessed firsthand the resolve in her actions. Yet I chose to deny her that. My body had acted before my mind even had time to think. I can't judge if I ultimately made the right decision. Should I have saved her life? Or was it self righteous of me to think I could decide her fate for her? Never mind. Check my head, then move on to them. Other matters. I have no idea what led to her wanting to jump from the lighthouse and attempt to end her life. Now that I've saved her from the initial fall, I'd feel beyond awful if her condition took a turn for the worse solely because of my incompetency. I want to reverse things, make it so that she never injured, she was never injured from the fall in the first place. Shinku? Nanda. I have a request. Onegai? Yeah. Nanda yo. Doshitanda? いいたいことがあるなら injury was a blunt head laceration or something else entirely was evidently severe enough to Cause her to lose consciousness. Please, I want you to heal her using your powers. <sighs> Shinko stares deeply into my eyes, almost as if she's probing my mind itself. Is that too much to ask for? <laughs> she folds her arms, shuts her eyes, and continues <laughs> on. Annoying. Well, yeah, what's the point of her stating that now? <laughs> she begins her explanation after a brief interlude of silence. I have to because of his memories, as far as we've already gathered. No matter how ghastly the injury is, severed head, a crushed heart, every bone in the body shattered, both eyes gouged out, all ten fittings cut off, it makes no difference whatsoever. So long as the essence of life, the thing referred to by some as a soul, still remains intact. Is that a person that she can completely heal any wounds of the flesh? Right, so just use your powers and... Shinko, Shinko, please, we don't have time to sit here and discuss this. Every minute we waste could mean the difference between life and death for this girl. <sighs> she like to shake her head. I can tell through that expression. She's given up on trying to persuade me any further. Hmm.
She then reaches down and softly lays her fingers on the girl's pale forehead. A spell is being cast. She gives magic is an inconspicuous type, which means she chants no grandiloquent incantation or emits any sort of faint, mysterious light from her hand. Even though we don't see it, we know it to be there. A distinctive disinfectant-like aroma slowly, slowly disperses throughout the surrounding air. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Inspect the girl resting in my arms. Seems to me like she's regained at least a bit of her complexion. Huh? Look at the girl once more scrutinizingly. Seems fine to me. Not what you meant.私が心配しているのはお前のことだ。ねえ。私のことはちゃんと覚えているか。やだよ。ええ。サクファイスするティングズのオーディオズパワー。イツミスとビーザ。ザソースオブフェアズ。イツミスとビーザ。ザソースオ
She turns her back to me before dissipating. Good night, Shinko. I don't feel tired. Even if she could advise me not to, I think I'll just stay awake until rough sunrise. The girl was mur murmuring something about her mom. A mother is one of the many things that I myself lack. Alright, can't forget the diary. Before it escapes her mind, I jot down everything that transpired today. It's a requirement I must adhere to in order to use Shinku's power. Oh, sorry, I have American Air audience. Do I need a brown bag? <laughs> sorry, I will not, not make fun of that because it's retarded. <sighs> I must have fallen asleep without realizing it at some point last night. So, but groggily lift myself up from the tatami, tatami floor. What woke me up was the bright sunlight shining through the thin gap between the curtains. Really wish I could stay here until she wakes up, but uh, that's probably not possible. She promised me I'd show up at school, up to school on time. Uh, yeah, I really want to stay on a good side, if at all possible. Quickly gather what I need for school and prepare to head out. I guess I'll at least leave her a note. I'll leave breakfast for her on the table along with a simple note reading for you. If she's still here when I get back, well, I guess we can sit down and hear her story. So we're cutting off there. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Ah, uh, there we go. Now she has a Late. Well, I guess then I'll have learned my lesson, and I'll never bring home girls who fall out of the sky again. After a short muffled laugh, I begin to ponder the situation. I don't think it though. There's not much in here, so I act that there's not much in here that I'd actually care about being stolen. Oops, that's one thing. I turn around and walk towards the desk in my room. I proceed to pull out the diary book from inside the drawer and stow it in my book bag before leaving the apartment. Man, I'm such a dumbass. Ned falls onto the top of my well varnished light brown desk. I've got to buy lunch. Again. It's been like an hour, mere seconds after lunchtime rolls around. To say people learn from their mistakes, but no, not me. I, I repeat ad infinitum. <sighs> and I also forgot my wallet. Great. Just great. Shinku giggles humorously. Oh, shut it. Well, why didn't you remind me? So Besides, you can't have the best of both worlds. I love being spoiled rotten. I purse my lips peevishly at Shinku as my energy continues to deplete. Hmm. What? Just ignore that. Shake my head, then go on. But yes, I forgot to bring lunch. Sad, I know. But, but hey, at least I admitted it today, like you told me to. She reaches into her bag and takes out a box containing her lunch. Please, Mio, Mio, baby, all I want is some love. Oh. My grumbling stomach demands nourishment. I'm assuming you won't give me anything, anything at all, no matter how desperately I beg. Ignored. My plight indeed seems to be in vain. God, I'm starving. Manage is gone completely and utterly. Huh? She 
pulls out a second lunchbox and places it on my desk. Mio, what? What is this? God Buddha Mita Mio. Hallelujah. Oh my god! I have no words to describe my current emotional state. I can only stare at mouth gape at my childhood friend. I can have this? For real? For real? But, well, don't mind if I do then. The moment I take out my sweet, sweet lunchbox, it mysteriously evades my grasp. Uh, you said I could have it! The condition. And that condition would be? She raises her index finger and then smugly states her condition. I'm not sure I follow. Oof, that sounds like a lot of work for not much gain. Well, in all truthfulness, I only did that because I want to stay on a good side. Oh, every day now we're talking. What? What? Every day? Really? It will? Sounds, sounds like an excuse you're using in order to, you know, groom your husband back into sh back into shape, but uh, I won't say that out loud. Hmm. Alright, I'll do it. Considering all the factors in this, can't see any other options but to comply. I'll try to be responsible, whatever, like you want me to. Even though I'm still kind of confused about what you mean by responsible. Sorry. Hmm? Sure, I promise I'll be responsible. She plays the box back on my desk. Oh, I will. If my reward is getting homemade lunches from you every day, I could do anything. She laughs and lightly smiles at me. Oh, nothing. For some reason, her smile makes me feel warm inside. Most likely because I really like her smile. You got it. I'm gonna win those lunches just you wait. Every dish you make is made with love, Mio. That's why I can't get enough of your cooking. <laughs> With a huff, she turns around and faces forward. Time to eat. Time to clean my nose out real quick. Press my hands together. So good. Ah, oh, how I've waited to eat her homemade cooking again. Exquisite deal is the only word to describe it. It was heavenly. After devouring as every last crumb inside the box, I closed the lid and had a back door. Twas superb, thank you. 
So that's confirm. You're really being serious when you said you'd make me lunch every day from now on. Oh, that's just plain rude. I totally remember that conversation. He squints at me dubiously. But yeah, you really saved me. I'll no longer have to starve and go through those near death experiences anymore. You're so good at cooking me. I'd put anything made by you in my mouth, even if it was one of those charcoal lumps you typically see from girls who can't cook, can't cook for the life of them. Oh no, it was absolutely a compliment. I was just, uh, I was just trying to say that uh, that I know anything you'd make would taste good. I don't think, too, don't think too hard about it. Well, it's about time for me to go home. Grab my books and stand up. Uh, yeah, I actually just remembered some super urgent business I need to take care of pronto, so I need to leave a little early today. So, uh, don't tell anyone about this, but, uh, I lowered my voice to a whisper. This girl fell down from the sky last night. She stares at me like I'm the most monkey brain person on this, on this entire planet. Nah, my brain's working just fine. I think. I, I mean, yeah, I, I see why you have cause for concern, but uh, what I have told you is the truth, as bizarre as it seems. My current theory is some top secret mafia esque organization is out to kill her because she knows too much. Oh, oh and I also have one more. Uh, maybe, like, she's some sort of mutant or psychic that was being confined to some research facility and she escaped. But yeah, I'm expecting something along those lines. Quite a few times, actually. <laughs> I've heard of my mind off. When I lost myself halfway through that inquiry and rambling. Even I lost myself halfway through that inquiry and rambling. L listen. Buddy, just say that last night you went out, saw a girl try to kill herself, and she's currently still asleep in your bed, probably. Because you didn't know what the fuck to do with her, and you couldn't leave her out there, so you just took her home. Yes, ma'am. Slink my bag over my sh left shoulder. Sorry, Miri Mio, I really am. I won't back out of our promise, I swear. I just have to make a bit of an exception today. <sighs> the bell rings on cue. Quickly strut out the door and exit the building. What if that girl already left? Not that I have any qualms with that, but still. Still can't seem to take my mind off the girl I'd left back in my apartment. Upon walking inside, we find a girl resting in her bed, exactly the same as we left as when we left. Question, Shinku. Hmm? She is just sleeping, right? Hmm? I'm just worried you might have come down with some serious affliction. Her pursed lips indicate she took slight offense to that remark. No, sorry, I don't, I'm not doubting you or anything, it's just, well, you know... You've told me your power only heals injuries, not diseases, isn't that right? I was a bit worried about leaving her all alone, that's the whole reason I rushed back, but yeah, the concerns were evidently unwarranted. She's perfectly fine, and that's grand. No reason to fuss. I was hoping she'd be up so I could have her explain herself, but the way things are now, I'm essentially just wasting time by being here. Mm, I don't think that's a very good idea. Briefly ruminate over my options. Where to put my phone again? I was just thinking of giving Suzu a call. Because I'm an indecisive adult who can't come up with anything without his master's help. 
After picking up my phone, I quickly hit the speed dial button. I still wanted to wait until I got a chance to talk to the girls before consulting Suzu, but I guess I won't be able to do that. She suddenly rides around us like that. Oh. Oh no. She's an idiot. I slowly lowered the hand with my phone in it. Did she just sleep talk? Talk about a cliche development. She just had to choose the most standard sleep talking line ever, didn't she? So now that I've seen signs of life in her, I decided to hold off on contacting Suzu. Come on now, wakey wakey. I tried jostling her a bit. Put a bit more strength into it, but to no avail. Yeah, I can't say if I ever using force. What are we gonna do if she never wakes up from her slumber? At the very moment that thought crosses my mind, the girl opens her eyelids. It's been our conversation, while well, the loudness of my voice, I should say. Her eyes flicker. Oh, she's awake! Spit flies on me, I wipe my face. <laughs> Girl sits upright and immediately begins inspecting her surroundings. <laughs> nope, you're still in the world of the living. <laughs> her eyes meet mine. Good morning. <laughs> you can tell from her the expression of utter bewilderment on her face. She's wondering who the hell I am. Uh, don't just give me that face. Say something. I, then, yes, I am God. <laughs> huh? You know, I was, was expecting it to, it to line up with the Is This Heaven line, but nah. Why is that the first conclusion you jumped to? Uh, no. Hmm, yeah. Yeah. Her eyes dart around as she tries to take in her surroundings. Yeah, I should probably tell you a few things. I give her a brief synopsis of everything that transpired following her attempt at suicide. Naturally, I admit the part's better left unsaid, which is to say everything involving Shinku's power. That's right. Me. Yeah, uh, I guess you could say that. Despite my smile, I'm still a bit afraid. Right that you might not have wanted me to stop her from killing herself. I spent a few hours brooding on it last night as well. But I sense absolutely no anger or resentment from her whatsoever. Much to the contrary, in fact. She's delighted. Oh, uh, you're welcome. I should have pride to her for circumstances too deeply. Suicide is a touchy subject, and pestering a person to tell you things about against their own volition is, while well, not very respectful. So, uh... <laughs> you slept for quite a while, huh? <laughs> Gotcha. Silence. Suffocating silence. She starts to rummage around her kimono fretfully. Glasses. Ah, uh, would these be them by any chance? And with the glasses I took from them, her kimono. Sorry, I went and searched through your sleeves while you were asleep. She takes the case from me and proceeds to open it with a gleeful smile on her face. Oh, you did jump from a fucking lighthouse. Hmm, the glasses are. Take a peek inside and sure enough, they're broken beyond repair. Lenses, lens pieces are cracked into numerous fragments. Man, that's pretty bad. Got an unfixed one. Sure won't be easy. I'll take another look at the case. It isn't very sturdy at all. 
No wonder they couldn't fully absorb the impact from last night. Drum, in fact, is also bent in several places. Saya, were those glasses special to you? Both her words and her actions indicated something to me. And those glasses meant some to her personally. If they were more than just an item of necessity. What? Really? Janice stows the case away. ただの眼鏡です。どこにでもあるだろう。普通のものです。that's probably why. はい、ありがとうございます。だから自分の不注意というかそういうことで壊してしまったのはちょっとショックだというか。Makes sense. bed directs about towards towards me as she as naturally as she can. Is she gonna be a person from another world? Ah, no, it's fine. No, you don't have to worry about repaying me or anything. I saved because I wanted to play it simple. Getting a thank you from her is enough as a of a reward in and of itself, especially since I was prepared for her to chastise me for saving her. So, uh, now we've gotten that out of the way, we need to discuss some things. Okay. Where are you gonna go now? I don't want to entertain it, but she may head to the lighthouse again. In that case, I can't let her leave on her, to her own, can't leave her to her own devices. What? その人を見つけられないと私はきっとまたあそこに連れ戻される。あんなところに帰るくらいなら。Stops the sentence and hangs her head. Her eyes are fixated, fixed on her clenched face, uh, fixated on her clenched fists. Hmm. Scratch my head and a bit restlessly. This conversation has gone a bit too dark for my liking. So, do you have any sort of plan? これから? Well, you're not thinking of uh, doing that again, are you? だいじょうぶです。もうあそこから飛び降りようだなんて思いませんから、私。Good。せっかく助けていただいたこの命です。もう少しだけあの人を探してみます。最後まで諦めずに。Okay。その人ならきっと私を助けてくれるはずだと思うので。What's their name? Can you at least tell the name? Girl stands up uncomfortably and restless. A sudden, a shudder runs through her body. The corners of her lips twist to, to form a grimace. Everything all right? She's surfing from head to toe, and her left hand is buried in between her legs. She needs to go to the toilet. You gotta go? She bobs her head up and down repeatedly. Just the look of her sheer fright over her face tells me everything. Go right ahead. She rushes to the bathroom with staggering, staggered steps, bumping into the wall several times along the way. She mentioned being near side, and that clearly seems to be the case. After returning from the bathroom, she fidgets around nervously, red in the face, and apologizes. No worries, we're asleep for a long time. She bows so deeply her head and barely avoids smacking into the wooden floor. Sure, take care of yourself, alright? The girl whose name I still don't know opens the door and scurries right on out without a single glance back. Hm. I want to offer my help, but my station got the best of me and I ultimately kept my mouth shut. The reason that if she wasn't willing to tell me anything, then she more than likely wouldn't want my help. 
Well, yeah, I was going to, but how do I put it? After finishing, after I finished saying goodbye to the girl, whose name I forgot to ask, come to think of it, I walked back to my room to find Shinku standing there, appearing somewhat miffed. Couldn't really tell why, but I just kind of got the feeling she didn't want me to get involved. As you could say, so. あの晩あの灯台の下に置いていってもよかったんだ。こうして中途半端に関わるよりはマシだった。みんな私の言いたいことは実のところ一つしかないんだ。いつだってそうなんだよ。Which would be? あくまでも私たちの願いを叶えるためにある力なんだ。それには特にこれといった名称は存在しないが、あえて言えばこの完全治癒は。ユーマ。私の宿主であるお前の教訓をすり減らすんだ。力を使うたびにね。私の力完全
That was the primary reason I can never remember to bring my lunch. I don't know if it's just that. Even I realize it sounds like nothing more than a convenient excuse. Alright. After a curt nod to take out the diver from a boat bag. When I close my eyes and draw try to draw out memories, I always end up seeing you. What I always end up seeing is that dream. Please, the voice calls to me. Amigo! Door stuck! Please save us. I will never stop. I write down and complete the diary entry for today and to remember so I don't end up losing everything. With that, my day uneventfully become, comes to an end, or at least so it should have. And I find you in the exact same place. What are you doing? I, really can, I can already say I'm surprised. Currently, it's currently early evening time. I was walking along the road leading to the Arashiyama dormitory. As I was passing by the light, I had spotted a certain familiar face. Speechless and exasperated as I was, I couldn't possibly just turn the other cheek. You told me you weren't going. You were going to go searching for search for that person. She tilts her head quizzically. I was just walking along the road when I caught sight of you. I had a teensy tiny feeling that this wouldn't be the last time I saw her when she walked out that door, and would you know it? I was right. Uh, back to my question. Uh, aren't you searching for someone? So, uh, while you're back at the lad house again. She hangs her head shamefully. Surely you're not thinking of them. Good. That's a relief. If not that, then what? Yes. I'm searching for that person. I'm waiting for that person. That's why I'm waiting for that person. I'm waiting for that person. Okay, that's... Well, hold up. How come you're all beaten up? Her knees and arms are covered in light scratches and bruises. So I guess, yeah. As she tried to grope her way through the dark, and she tripped and fell multiple times, essentially. Um, man, oh man, you sure are a handful. Take her hand. She panics like crazy, but I pay no mind. Quiet, it'll only take a second. The smell of disinfectant slowly pervades through the nocturnal air. By the time I let go of her hand, those red spots on her arms and knees are no more. I'm able to heal light wounds such as these without the need of Shinku's permission. Her eyes flicker. Uh, right about that, it's a bit hard to explain. <laughs> uh, promise me you won't laugh. I'm actually what you might call a sorcerer. Pretty cool, huh? Silence. Right, sorry. Give me one second. I was just didn't buy that. I was trying to make it sound like I was joking, you know. So Light things up a bit. My main distractor, so I wouldn't have to actually tell the truth, but yeah. Chances are she thinks I'm some delusional nut job now. The moment the word sorcerer left my mouth, I physically cringed. Sorry, I just forget I ever said that. I meant that it's a joke, okay? But it feels but it totally fell flat. Harp on about it anymore and I'll be crying on my in my bed tonight. All of a sudden the girl's staring at me with a grave countenance. Nante 
Is this the instrumental ver- supposed to be the instrumental version of the opening? She lightly clasps my ha clasps my hands tightly. That's what's gotten into you. What? Did you just... Wait, wait, stop! How do you know my name? She droops her head. Huh? Huh? What do you mean? Wait, slow down. Stop connecting all the dots in your head and give me an explanation? I wonder if the share what's going on in her mind with me. I'm completely in the dark. What's going on? Why is she calling herself an idiot? What do you mean? What, faith what fateful day? What promise? What are you talking about? I haven't the foggiest idea what she's referring to. I don't, but... My dream, a voice says to me, let's exchange a promise. Those words instantly come to the forefront of my mind. I exchanged a promise with you. Wait, please, just slow down and give me time to process everything. I have a very, very bad feeling about the direction this is heading. Um, what? Man, what is this feeling? She's as though I've been thrown inside a maze with no exit. Actually, I'm curious. No, that's still chapter one, actually. <laughs> the girl's name I've yet, still yet to learn is tightly clasping my left hand and shows no sign of wanting to let go. What do you mean? How far back are, we comp are you comparing to? I promise you, sir. She gives a firm, resolute nod. You want me to rescue you? Her tone is simply too filled with distraught for me to honestly admit that I don't know her. Um, could you let go of my hand first? Then after that, please explain all the stuff you've been talking about. She gazes up at me with the look of an abandoned puppy. Okay, I need to be truthful to her. No more lying. I don't actually remember her. Gradually, teardrops begin to well up in her eyes. I feel a sharp, prickling pain in my chest. I'm sorry, but I have a question for you as well, if you don't mind. Why were you searching for me exactly? There are so many question marks floating around in my mind right now. Are you saying that this elusive person, person you've been searching the death for was me all along? What makes me so special? I've lost any hope of fooling her now. She knows who I am and furthermore she knows of Shinka's power. You're... You're full of riddles yourself and I'd really like for you to shed some light on various things about yourself. But for now, could you... Start by telling me why you know my name. What? When? Oops. 
Sorry. This man should at this point already connect the dots and be like, maybe this is one of the memories that my power deleted. Like he knows the cost of his power, so every time a major memory like such as this is gone, he should just immediately assume, fuck, the power. She has a distant, wistful look in her eyes, like she's revisiting years old memories. Whereas I, on the other hand, I feel a sense of distrust creeping inside me. Due to the nature of my job, I've developed a habit of being wary around, w wary around people, often more than necessary. Yeah, I agree. Nothing, just talking to myself. But right, uh, back to what we were talking about. Jink was right, she doesn't give off any red flags. Well, maybe a few, but I don't believe her to be a malicious person. Still, never has to be a bit vigilant. Are you sure you got the right guy? I'm sure my name is Kanwa Yuma, the same name as the person you're looking for, but it has to be a... Big coincidence, you're looking for some other kind of way you know me. <laughs> Turn my back towards an attempt to bring this conversation to an end. I still don't know what you're talking about, but I'm done here. So if you'll excuse me, I need to head home. I promise, in exchange, exchange with a sorcerer. I don't understand much in anything, but avoiding involvement is probably my, in my best interest. That's the conclusion I've reached. Have a good night. <laughs> I hear an excessively loud crashing sound. Um, can I ask you a question? I turn back around. She fell on the ground face first at the full mercy of gravity. She flays around on the ground holding her nose all the while squeaking out very odd noises. The ground is perfectly fat, flat. How do you trip over nothing? Are you trying to make me feel sorry for you or something? Goodness gracious, now your nose is bleeding. After a hefty sign, roll the eye, squat down, and look her dead in the eye. Take better care of your face, okay? Look, jeez, all that blood is dripping on your clothes. You know, I'm genuinely impressed that you managed to wander all the way out here, despite somehow being prone to tripping on flat ground. Oh yeah, I think he did. Hey, 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 can I have a handkerchief? <laughs> you have one, don't you? She nods. Let me see it for a sec. Take it and thoroughly wipe her face. Following that, I invoke Shinku's power, and as usual, the smell of disinfectant spreads. <laughs> Alright, there we go, all better now. She snorts loudly with teary eyes. <laughs> Sorry, I got your handkerchief a little dirty. Stand up. Girl still on her knees gazed up at me with a look of sheer desperation. Like a puppy left out in the rain. <sighs> I heave a sigh. No to no one's surprise. Do you uh, wanna come with me? I just don't have it in me to ditch this poor girl. Can't even object to it at that point. Pick up the pace, I'm gonna leave you behind. You've left the lighthouse and are now passing through the deserted nighttime streets of the shopping district. I walk with an impatient gait while the girl behind my back barely matches the tea to rely as she fumbles around to feel where she's going. She runs smack dab into a telephone pole. <laughs> and her foot got uh, then gets her foot stuck in a gutter. And finally falls face first on the floor, the flat, perfectly even ground. <laughs> Fine. Come on, give me your hand. We're not gonna get anywhere at this rate. 
申し訳ありません。Extend my hand out and she takes it. Kore nara haruki a sui desu. Kurayami mo don't o koi to yu kanji de shou ka. Right. After responding indifferently, I quicken my pace. After a short while, we arrive at our destination on a Shiyama Hall. I swing open the entrance door. <laughs> All right, time to solve the case of, Suzu, of Suzu's murder. Midi upon a stepping in, I discover one Natsume Suzu lying prostrate on the on the floor. Please tell me in God's name what you're doing. Yukun, osoi yo. Kyo wa kimi ga o yuhan wo tsukutte kureru hi de shou. It's your turn, actually. In your mind, it's always my turn to make dinner. Even when it's your turn, would that assessment be correct? Don't put words in my mouth, please. I shouldn't have to take care of you like I'm your mother or something. Try to make your own meal sometimes. I promise I won't kill you. With Huff, this 22 year old woman child turns her head away. She's 22! Huh. I mean, quite frankly, if I met a woman like this in IRL, I still wouldn't fucking touch her, but, uh, for a coincidence! Right around my age. Hey, like, right around my age range. I mean, I. I. Actually, I think I'm having a bit of a gestalt safari here. I'm. I'm older than a character that's put, that's considered, like, old, like older than the MC in a visual novel. Oh no. Like she's supposed to be considered like the the mature option, quote unquote, option. Yet I'm yet I'm older. <laughs> I feel physical pain from that thought. Ah! Uh... <laughs> I have to spot my companion, uh, my company, she tilts her head curiously. Ah, uh, bit hard to explain. I found myself at a loss for words. I actually still haven't even gotten her name. How am I gonna explain this to Suzu? The girl regards Suzu with suspicion. It's alright. Don't worry, I know she seems a bit scary at first glance, but she's not a bad person. Go ahead and introduce yourself. The girl stares at me with a Frown for a few moments. She clears her throat and looks to Suzu. She speaks resolutely and with a hint of timidness still evident. Why, 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 why do I feel a vague, bad premonition? Okay. Um, what? Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Do, do you know what you just said? I don't know who you think your sweetheart is, but it sure as hell ain't me. Tucks on my sleeve, gazing at me through her eyelashes. No, thank you. I slap away her hand. She makes a sad face. Shoot a sidelong glance towards Suzu and see her shaking. Um, Suzu, is everything okay over there? Oh lord. Oh lord. Oh lord. Oh lord. <laughs> Hold on. Need to... <sighs> For some reason my underpants are riding up underneath my fucking sweatpants. It's weird and I hate it. And it's fucking doo doo. I hate that situation. She prowls herself at me full force. Oh there. Dodge and reflex. 
After a failed attempt, leaves her sliding across the floor of the interior. Sorry, but I have to be. But, but I'd have to be a billionaire before ma I'd marry you. Ah, yeah, she she had a bit of a nosebleed on the way here. Yeah, if you have any spare clothes lying around that you might change into, that would be greatly appreciated. Actually, hold on. Pull your pants up, woman. We can see the fucking start of the cleft. Her reluctance is almost palpable. No worry, she has a few screws loose, but yeah, like I said, she doesn't bite. Surely you're not gonna keep wearing that outfit with blood all over. Just do what I'm telling you, alright? She nods. Sisa takes her hand and then climbs the stairs to the second floor together, albeit with the girl shooting worried glances back at me every other step. Still chapter one. While those two are busy, I decide to head down to the basement. After setting the wall clock, I venture for I venture off to a foreign world. Arashiyama Hall is no ordinary stoomed dormitory. The basement of this old wooden building is connected to a myriad of different parallel worlds. The reason for this is a bit complicated, or so I've been told. Today the wall clock's hands stop at 6 o'clock, 48 minutes. It's another new world I've never visited before. But contrary to my expectations, nothing I'm looking for. Can't fight that something I've so desperately been looking for, or anything related to it. Please, the voice calls to me in my dreams. Please, I'm begging you. Door stuck. I mean, please save us. I, I, I say again, you cannot escape the joke. I will keep making it until the mere mention of a door makes you want to fucking crawl under a goddamn like under what actually under a car? Nah, that's too mild. Bury yourself on the ground, I guess. Specifically under like a solid foundation. Oops. I have to reach that location I keep seeing them in the dream, no matter what. The thing I'm searching for is linked to that location in some way. I keep looking and looking, but I can't find anything. Not the thing, or the location, or even the tiniest of hints. I know nothing about this something that I'm looking for, save for the fact that I must find it. For some reason, I can't request the door manager to find it. For that reason. <laughs> The na face of the nameless girl who fell from the sky flashes across my mind. I made a promise with her. The voice in that dream said precisely that. I exchanged a promise. I've returned from my excursion and now stand in the dorm's kitchen. She used to fruit is practically empty. She at least gone shopping or something. As I'm foraging through the pitifully barren fridge, I hear someone entering enter the dining room. Oh, what have I already done? That was pretty fast. Pick into the area from my position here. Sorry, dinner's not ready yet. I'll whip up some quick, so just be patient. Yeah, yeah. What's all the fuss about? Look, look. 
standing behind the door sill is the girl dressed in her new outfit. Um, explain this to me. The sight I behold, the sight I behold is not only is, uh, not only embarrassed by Valda's imagination, it transcends them. She reaches around, cheeks flushed. Why are you acting so smug? Can't ha make ha heads or tails of this at all. Why is she even wearing that apron dress? Is, is, is that what it is? Then a thought comes to me. Oh my god, don't tell me you used to wear that. Now oh, that is somewhat upset upsetting if you'll tell the nausea overcoming me. Great, I feel better now. No particular reason. Okay, good, no, good to know. Very, very good information. You're not getting any food for the next week. <laughs> Wait, you wanted to put that on me? So, so. She's awfully pleased with herself, that's certain. Um. Back up. Assuming my ears are working properly, you just mentioned something very, very concerning about me and this outfit. Can you explain? Ah, so it's okay. Today, this girl is going to go to the house. So, it's okay to go to the house. Great, wonderful. But uh, what I'm more concerned about is what that little remark about you wanting to stick that outfit on. Wait. You said you keep it here? Ah, kau janakute sumu da yo ne. What am I hearing? Okay, but that's not what I was trying to ask. It had it coming. Nani ka hanashi o kiite miru to sa. Kono ko iku tokoro nakute komatte ru mitai janai. What? Dakara chotto koko ni oite agerare ru ka dou ka kani ni ni kiite mita nda kedo. Betsu ni in janai. Would it kill that man to put a bit more consideration to these decisions? Mama, Candy Ninga eat the dinner and the caramunda in the stay. Oh, so they are near. Her face reads that she has no clue how to respond. This is a mess. I feel someone left in the dark like this whole ordeal went down behind my back, which probably, which is probably why I have mixed feelings about it. そんな感じで、ユーマさん、ちょっと急展開ではありますが、どういうわけかこんなことになってしまいました。いや、ワイズプリグッドクエスチョン。私なんかがこんなにもよくしてもらえて、非常に申し訳ない気持ちでいっ
その時は私のこと思い出してくれたその時は魔法使いさんどうか私を助けてくださいね The girl whose name I still have yet to learn beams with a precious smile that seems to almost that it seems to me almost transient. A dream. Yes. <laughs> yes. Still not chapter two. This is a dream. You and I. Let's exchange a promise. Who is she and who am I? Where am I right now? Fathers fall as the wind blows, flittering and f flittering and fluttering. I understand nothing, nothing at all. Like it is at all. And there is a reason for that. We have no memories. Shimmering white feathers continuously fall, flittering and fluttering towards the se place we seek out, the location where our promise was born. Once there, they will f we will finally reclaim that all that we've lost. Mina Mikana does not cry. That the s Did the achievement just spoil her name for me? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh Oh no the Chapter is called Minami Kana Does Not Cry. I thought it was like, read chapter 2. It's called, the achievement is called Minami Kana Does Not Cry. And it's because we just went through that entire story. But nah. Wrong. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. See you next time. Maybe I'll actually record for longer tomorrow. Bye bye.